How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do a set of steps just like this. A lot of people will call it bull nose, upholstery, Cadillac style, Hollywood style, or whatever. What the difference is from the traditional set of steps is instead of it coming over and straight down, it actually has a little bit of an overlap to uh, inch and a half, two inches hanging over so that you have a little bit of overhang from your riser, okay? That's what sets these apart. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get some nice professional results doing steps just like this. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is go ahead and get our texture cut placed and then pad it and we'll be ready for some carpet. So I like to cut it about a half inch short, therefore it's a quarter inch short on each side. That way I've got just the proper spacement proper space on each side of my tack strip to, to tuck my carpet in there, okay? A lot of times this will be a little bit problematic because this bull nose will actually hang out over the nails right here, and you gotta have it up close there. If you have it too far back, you know, that causes problems. We definitely do not want our tack strip too far away. It just makes it look awful. It'll look like the carpet actually drops down like that as it's going to the step. So we definitely need to keep this about a uh, three-eighths or a quarter inch and what happens is whenever you're trying to nail these down because it is underneath of this bull nose right here from the previous step a lot of times somebody will hit that right there so what I like to do on these back pieces I'll simply take my stair tool right here I'll place it on the nail head and I'll use it just like a tack strip driver that is a little loud right there so forgive me for that mess that one up. There we go. If you'll notice it sinks it all the way in. I'm going to go ahead and do these then I'll show you on camera how it actually will work. Okay so just place the head of my stair tool right here on the nails. That way I don't have to swing up underneath of this. got this piece secured in there. Now I'm going to take my next piece. Go ahead and do the same thing with it. I'm going to go, uh, you want this to come all the way to the edge. This is actually rounded right here. So you want your tack strip to come all the way to the point and stop it just before it starts dropping off to round you to get round. Okay, you don't want your tack strip hanging over the part where it starts to get rounded right there. So I'm going to cut, cut and we're going to do a little something different with this piece. show you on other pieces right there so I want to take and cut this tack strip on an angle right here and this is going to allow me to get my pad all the way over to the edge of my step so if you notice how I cut that right there on a little bit of an angle I made it come to a point right there when that sets down there now I'll be able to get my pad all the way over and once I get all this stuff done I will I'll bring the camera in and let you guys see exactly what I'm talking about and how I've done it and stuff. Right now we'll get it going and then I'll go over that here in just a second. Okay. Go ahead and get these all on there. Again, you want about a quarter to three eighths of an inch from your wall with your tack strip. Always good to have some extra nails too because anytime you cut your nail, you cut your tack strip, you're always going to cut it in a place where you need extra nails. So typically I have a bag with me, but I don't right now. I'll just pull a piece out of this extra tack strip that I've got right here and then we'll go from there. Okay, let me bring you in. Okay, so if you'll see again how I got my tack strip angled right there on the side and the exact same thing right there on that side, notice the step right up above it there. See my tack, my pad actually goes all the way to the edge and that's because I have my tack strip cut at an angle right there and that allows my pad to come all the way over to the edge and it keeps a nice rounded contour of the step right here 
because I do that, okay? And that's the purpose of that. Okay, so there's not really any uh, science about putting pad on the step. You just want to make sure it goes from wall to wall completely that length. And then you can do your trim down after the fact that you get it done. That's what I'm right now. I'm just going just to cut it a little bit big there and go ahead and place this on there and get stapling. And then I'll cut it down after I start stapling. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and line the back piece of tack strip right here with my pad. Make sure that I do have pad enough to reach this wall and this wall. And just go ahead and get it stapled off right there. I don't want to overlap my pad of the tack strip by no means, but you do want it at least all the way to the tack strip. No need to go crazy on this. You don't need a thousand staples on this. We're just holding it in place while we kick our steps on, okay? Now, what I like to do so I can see the edge of this step, I'll take and pull it down right there, just like so, that way I can see the edge and see exactly where to staple to. Okay. Now I'm going to take my knife, go ahead and cut it down all the way around the tack strip. Again, we don't want it overlapped, but we do want it as close as we can possibly get. Now on the angled parts right here of the tack strip, this is kind of important right here for the profile of the step. We want to make sure that it stays nice and rounded on the edge of the step. So I'll show you exactly what I'm doing in just a second right there, okay? Okay, let's see here. Looky right here. Oops, sorry about that. So if you can see, I got my tack strip cut right there and the pad goes right up to the side of it there. See that? So that allows my pad to come all the way to the wall right there. Now the front of this is gonna be completely covered up with pad, which is exactly what we want. Now that I got it all stapled off and secured, I'm gonna take my knife and cut it straight off at the bottom of my, my curve right here, okay? We don't want it to go underneath it there because we do not want our electric staples when we're stapling the actual carpet onto the uh, step. We don't wanna be shooting through the pad. It's gonna make really visible divots. So we wanna take this pad and just cut it off right flush with the bottom of the curved part of the step right there, of the curved bullnose, okay? So I'm actually going to go, you can see I'm, what I'm doing, I'm filling with my fingers right here with these fingers and then I just follow along with my blade as I fill with my fingers. And I'm going to show you something I do that a lot of people don't do and that's okay. It's just something that I prefer to do myself. I feel like it holds up better over time, okay? And That is duct tape, okay? You see what I got going on right here? I always got duct tape on the edge of my steps. And I went over this in other videos. What it does, it protects, protects the pad from the back end of the carpet. The back end of the carpet is actually really rough and it will break down your pad faster than it would if it was protected. So this is just gonna give me a little bit extra extra security right here and cause the pad to last significant, significantly longer than not having tape, okay? So my first piece, I'm gonna actually put two pieces here. The first piece I'm gonna put right on that and then I'm gonna put another one to just tape it up under and on the bottom of that bull nose right there. It ain't gotta be all pretty or nothing like that because it's gonna be completely covered it's simply to uh, make it last longer. It has nothing to do with looks or anything like that. It, it ain't gonna, you're never even going to know that the tape is there. By a visual, that is. By looking at it, you'll never know the tape is there.
Okay, there we go. Now that's nice and protected from the back of the carpet on all three steps. Next thing we need to do is cut our carpet and install it. So whenever you're measuring your steps for carpet, you definitely got to be pretty specific on this. Um, I will start at the top and work my way down. And let's see here. I'll just push it all the way to the back of the wall. I'm going to take my thumb and push my tape measure up underneath the bull nose right there. Push it in, hold it with my finger, with my pointer finger right here on that step. Tuck it under the bull nose, the exact same thing all the way down. And whatever I got right there to the bottom, I got four foot and ten inches. So I'm actually going to cut that about five foot three, and that's going to give me plenty of carpet to work with, no matter if I, just no matter the fact, I don't ever want to cut it specific, just to always have extra to work with, okay? And for cutting the width of the steps, you have to measure each individual step uh, with the width. You want to get this absolutely precise. So that is 37. We're going to see how straight I built these. 37 and 37. Okay, so these are absolutely all the exact same. Um, if they wasn't, I would want to split them. Like if this one here was 37, this was 37 and a quarter, you would definitely want to cut and do this step by itself and then measure this one separate and have a completely separate piece. Definitely need to have these accurate when you're doing your cut, okay? These are 37 inches. This is my preference again, okay? A lot of people don't do this. I will take and cut my steps an eighth of an inch big. That gives me about a sixteenth on each side of my step. That way I'm just absolutely not going to be short. And also it gives me something to tuck in behind my tack strip on each side. Gives it a nice finished edge, okay? I don't like to have my steps just flush with the edge of this wall right here. I like to have it tucked in for a nice, professional, clean look, okay? So 37 and an eighth. By five foot and three is what I want to cut my steps for all three of these steps right here. Let's cut some rope. So to do this, I'm going to use a six foot straight edge to make sure that my carpet is nice and straight on the ends. Uh, that's going to be up next to the walls. And I've already got me one straight side right here where I straight edge it. Now I'm going to measure over, place my straight edge, and cut my piece. 37 and an eighth. Again, that gives me one eighth of an inch extra and to mark this I'm just going to put my little slice in the carpet with my knife and I'll just butt my straight edge up directly to the slice. That will be a perfect precise measurement without the, uh, using a pencil or anything like that which can vary a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch thick. So using the slice is definitely the most precise way that you can get your mark. So I will take my knife after I make my slit and I'll stick it my blade in there and I'll raise up on one side of it. That way my straight edge will just butt right up to my slice and I'm not sitting there digging and looking for it. I can just stop it right as soon as it touches my mark right there. Once I get both ends lined up, let's cut it. Some people will straight edge, they'll also put a, they'll put a square on their, on their piece right here, cut the bottom off nice and square, and line the bottom and go from there. Fine, that's okay to do that, I don't do it, I'll just get it all straight, lined up through here, and then I'll cut the bottom off myself, I don't, 99% of the time I do not straight edge and line the bottom of my step, I usually just cut the extra off, leave me a little bit and cut the extra off. So this is our piece. This is going to do the steps. You always, always you want to make sure that your carpet is laying down the steps. You don't ever want your carpet running up the steps or across your steps. What I mean by that, carpet has a direction to it, okay? So this is laying down. The nap is laying down that direction, standing up that direction. You might be able to see the color difference in that. You always want your carpet running down your steps, okay? It's just going to give a better, better look. You can go up with it, but you definitely do not want to go crossways. That reason is if carpet is made in runs, okay, and when you run it sideways over that and you bend it, 
it's going to open up one of those runs in the carpet and it's going to actually show the back end look like the carpet might be smiling at you or something, okay? So always running either up or down the steps. My preference is running down the steps. I cut this quite a bit long. I said 5'3". I actually cut it about 6 foot. You guys see the full length of my straight edge. So it's plenty long. Let's get it worked in there. Got it laid on there. I don't want to have extra down at the bottom just to make sure that I got plenty up top. So I'll just, I'll just allow me a few inches at the bottom, which I know I got plenty, like I said, because I cut about an extra foot. Give me some slack, and I'm going to go ahead and work it in each one of these steps like it should be. And because I got extra, I think I'll just leave it. Typically, I would take and cut the extra off. Right now, I'm just going to leave it, and uh, next thing we do, start staking and kicking. Okay, so we got our steps here and everything like that. Now, what we want to do, take our thumbs and push it right up underneath of that um, bull nose all the way around. Then we're going to take our electric tacker right here. I'm, I'm using a crane uh, power tacker here to do these steps. And what I want to do is take push all the way up with my thumbs underneath there. Because you want to make sure that you get the carpet in that crease right there really good. Okay, if you're down a little bit from the crease, it's going to make this uh, just look a little funny. Okay, it's still going to hold and everything like that, but you want to get the best you can up in that crease. Okay, you might even take your stair tool and do that just to ensure that you're all the way up in that crease as much as you can. Okay, now whenever you take your staple gun, you can just push it like that, just straight in like that. However, I will take and push right here on my staple gun toward the step. And what that does is it forces the nose of my gun right up in that crease, okay? So anytime I do steps, I always push the bottom of my staple gun in and it forces it right up in the crease. Now, I like to put a nice... nice line of staples in underneath here it just gives it such a clean look if you put a staple here 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 every few inches that's going to be a really good chance that you're going to see those staple marks if you put like tat 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 like i just did there you're gonna it's going to look like a nice consistent line there rather than having dimple 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 okay so that's why i will take and put my staples close together like that so we got it right here. Now we can actually take and cut our bottom piece off here. No matter what it is, what's, whatever's down here, you're going to always cut the same, okay? So you want to take and cut, uh, hold your knife about 45 degree angle right there. Make sure that you're in your corner really good. And just take and cut that right off there, okay? Once you get it cut off, you can shoot you a couple staples in it to hold it. Down there, again, this don't have to be filled up or nothing like that. It's simply just to hold this in place. There's no pulling or anything that's going to have an take an effect on this right here. So no need to load it up. Okay, there we go. On to the next one. So always before I start my next step that I want to be starting, I'm going to take and pull this carpet down just a little bit so there's not any resistance from it holding here. It's not holding me from getting in the crease really nice and tight like I want right there. So I want plenty of slack up here so I can get it good right here in this crack, okay? Right in the crevice, real good. I'm going to start in the center with my kicker, kick it up, stick it, move to my left. Now, Left or right, it doesn't matter. I just simply go left to right for preference myself. It's all stuck on the tack strip right here now in the back, so I'm going to take, now that it's stuck, I'm going to take my stair tool and a rubber mallet, just get it in there really good. And uh, I'm simply using a rubber mallet because it's less noise. You just don't have the echo of that metal on metal ringing in your ears, okay? 
nothing dramatic with these staples right here, just something to hold it right in place there, okay? Now that I got that all done, I'm gonna go ahead and take my knee kicker. I'm gonna bump it side to side now to make sure uh, it's nice and tight width ways. Uh, usually, if there are problems with your steps, they're gonna be wrinkles this direction, okay? Not very often do you find a wrinkle running across your step like this, okay? 99% of the time they're this way. People fail to stretch their carpet, your steps, from side to side, okay? That's why I put tack strip on each side. Now I can take and uh, kick my carpet to that side and kick it to this side. It's gonna be tight this way just as much as it is that way, okay? You don't have to get crazy on kicking it because you are going both ways in just this little three foot area, okay? strip kick it over tuck it in mash it on the strip now that's a nice tight step everywhere you want to go on it really nice and tight we're going to start on the second one now okay so now it's just pretty much p and repeat the same thing we did here we're going to do here and here okay again we're going to pull it down get us a little bit of slack push under the nose push under the bull nose take your staple gun and push in at the bottom, okay? And I am out of staples. <coughs> I am using uh, 3 16ths by 9 16ths uh, flooring staples. They are 20 gauge staples. These uh, really good staple. So that's what I'm using. That's what fits this type of tacker. 3 16ths crown, 9 16th leg. Again, pull some slack down, mash it in the crevice right there. Take your knee kicker, boom, boom, boom. Okay. If you cause a little pucker right there, whenever I kicked, I caused a little bit of a pucker. I'm gonna pull the slack up right here so that it's not puckering up between my tack strip and knee kicker. I'm gonna push it up once again. Hold the pressure on it with my leg right here, and then push it on the tack strip. Okay. left and then to right. Okay. Same old, same old. Take my stair tool, knock it in the crevice real good. Here. This is pretty important that you get this nice and even across here. What happens is if you get it tucked in the crack more here, than you do over here, you're going to be left with a whole bunch of bubbles and stuff like that on your uh, riser right here. It is really important that you sink your stair tool all the way down in the crevice. That way you can guarantee that it's going to be nice and straight. You're not going to be left with a whole bunch of wrinkled up carpet on your risers, okay? Nice and final step, pull it loose, tuck it under the, oops, let me, uh, let me go side to side there, I about forgot on that one. Again, you don't have to go really crazy on that, because you go both sides, okay? Let's see if I can do this. Give you just a little bit of a different view on this one, so maybe you can see a little bit of something that you didn't see up close. Same on, all the same process. Tuck it under, staple. <coughs> and then we're gonna, now this is our last step. We can go ahead and cut off the extra on this, just so it's not all in our way. And uh, kick it 
pick it up and stick it and staple it. You can actually take, uh, since I'm far enough off of the floor now, I can actually take my uh, knee kicker and just lean into it. I got it right here on my hip. Just lean into it and that's going to get it really, really nice and tight right there. Let me get you in a little closer on that. I want you to be able to see, I want you to be able to see the carpet moving right there. So you can see here, watch this. See all that? It's definitely getting really nice and tight. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the other side. Whenever I was going to my left, I had my kicker angled a little bit to the left. Now I'm going to the right, so I want to angle my kicker a little bit to the right right there. Pretty much the only one that you want straight is your very center stretches. Everything else you want to work either or whatever side you're going to. I will go to the left, I'll have my kicker angled to the left. Go to the right, angle your kicker a little bit to the right, and that just helps push everything nicely to each side. And it helps with the helps with the side stretches as well. Okay, I'm going to treat this just like it was a regular step coming up right here. So again, I'm going to take my stair tool, boom, 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 lock it in there. And on this one, since it is the very very last one, I'm just going to take my knife, cut it straight off. Okay, all down in the crevice real good. Again, I got my knife at about a 45 degree angle. To, to be sure that I don't cut it short or cut it too long, and I got a big mess of wadded up carpet in the back right there, okay? Uh, before I finish up, one last little thing. Kicking it sideways. Stick it on the strip. Same thing. Sideways. Stick it the Okay. So there we go. Everything is nice and clean looking. Uh, all the all the crevices are clean looking. All the bottom uh, going underneath the bull nosing are all even. All the way along, you don't have any dips or anything like that. And uh, that's what gives your steps a really, really nice and clean look whenever you take and uh, have everything looking uniform, okay? No humps here, no humps here. It's all flush, going all the way over to the very edge, okay? You don't have any dips or anything right here on the edge because our pad is all the way over to the wall. Nice and flat all the way over to the wall here because we have our tack strip here. Everything is just nice and uniform on every single step. That's exactly what we want. If you follow the simple directions that I give you right here in this video, you're going to have success with your steps just like we did right here, okay? Uh, once again, as always, I really appreciate you guys tuning in and uh, hope this video will help someone. Until next time, FBSB's out.